Hello and welcome to the Business Made Easy Show. I'm your host Fiona Hall and over on my side here I have the lovely Liz Fry. I don't know where she is on your screen but um, <laughs> here's where she is on my screen this morning. Um, the Business Made Easy Show, we came together at the beginning of this year, Liz and I, and we discovered we had the same word in common for this year and that word is freedom. And freedom for me is making my life easier. And that's my whole business, it's based on making life easier. If it's too hard, I'm doing it wrong, and either I'm going to find out how to do it easier, or I'm going to find some other clever bugger who's found an easy way for me and learn that way. So that's what we're here to do. We're in going to interview really clever buggers. So we've got a really clever bugger below, her name's Tracy <laughs> Moe. Um, and so each week we interview, have a guest expert who comes on and shares their wisdom with us. And the, pur the purpose is to add more joy back into your business and find some simple tips or techniques or ways or things that you can learn that can make your life easier in business. Because most of us who are probably listening in or joining in run a business that's a small business. And often we're working by ourselves for long periods of time and it gets really lonely. And we also get stuck in our heads and think we have to solve the problems all ourselves. And that does not work. We all know we get stuck and we get into that little wheel in our head, the little rat in the cage that goes round and round and round and round and we never get off, the, off that wheel. Um, so let's find some simple ways to get off that wheel and take action more regularly in our businesses that's going to get us to where we want to get to. Mm. So uh, my business is Kiffin. I'm rebranding at the moment to my full name. I'm still a work in pro progress around that. So I'm all about um, helping you smooth out those speed bumps in your business so that you can go a bit faster. And I do that through helping people strategically look at their business and their systems and figure out really simple things they can put in place every day that's going to make life easier for them. So it might be really simple systems around how you return calls or emails. It could be your sales process and quoting process. It could be writing your whole operations manual. So as your business is growing and you're taking on team, they know how to serve your customers really well and you can take a well-deserved break and not be worried about the phone and email responses all the time. So then I've got the lovely Liz Fry over here. And Liz is amazing. She is an amazing connector. And she's really, really great at organizing events and getting guest speakers in. She has run events for a few people now and have watched them go really smoothly. She has a real skill with that. And her connecting skills are one from a place of looking for the win-win for everybody. And she has a really lovely, delightful, gentle way of doing that, but also holding people to account which you need to have happen. She's really good at doing that with me. I don't even know it's been done. And then suddenly I'm like, right, yes, I'm doing that. <laughs> we all need someone, one of those people in our lives who might help us take action. So Liz is one of those people. So um, I'm going to slip into the next part of our show where Liz um, and I share a nugget. So I'm going to share a nugget and then we're going to go across to Liz. She's going to introduce herself a little bit more fully than what I have and give, her, give you her nugget of wisdom. So my wisdom this week is actually based on the show we did last week with Michelle who joined us at the last minute. So we did an impromptu show and it was really fun. We talked about procrastination. So I went back and I actually listed some other stuff out of that show and some other things I kind of discovered along the way. And I thought one thing we didn't really look at was the cause of procrastination. So we talked a little bit around that feeling of being an overwhelm. And so when I get into that feeling of overwhelm, for me, it's heavy right here on my chest. It's a real heaviness. I ask myself a few questions to help me either shift what I'm doing myself or if I really can't, to reach out to someone. So the questions are, so take note, am I pushing myself too hard? Do I need a break, some time to recharge and gain a fresh perspective? Have I lost myself down the rabbit hole of second guessing my decisions? when I really just need to reach out to a colleague or a business friend and use conversation to clarify my next steps. It's not often that I need that advice. I find the process of dialogue, just talking it out, I often come up with my own answers and you're probably the same. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking I have to do it all myself when I actually just need to bloody well pay the money and get someone else to do it for me. I don't really need to learn how to do a click funnel, right? <laughs> 
do I really want to learn how to do that? No, I'm going to call my friend Deb and get her to do it for me. Um, have I overscheduled myself? Um, stop and reassess. And I think we're all probably can relate to that one as over overscheduling. And kind of linked into the overscheduling, am I playing Miss Nice and putting everybody else's requests and needs before my own ones? Um, I think a lot of women really kind of slip into that Miss Nice pleaser person quite easily, and it's a really bad place to get to because um, it kind of just becomes a spiral where you go down into that you end up resenting people at the end of it if you're not too careful. So personal boundaries, big one. The other question I look and go, do I need a mental day off? So have I really just overwhelmed myself with my computer, my social media, my phone? Do I need to stop and reconnect with my family and friends? So those are some good little questions, I think, to take away. If you want to um, have a look at that full article, I wrote it recently on LinkedIn. So what I'll do is I'll just put a link to it over here if you want to read some more about some ways to look at procrastination and overcoming it. Over to Liz. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Fiona. Fiona. Am I echoing? Uh, a little bit. Not too bad, though. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm Liz Fry of LizFry.com. And um, for those that don't know, I, as Fiona says, I'm all about um, yeah helping get your message out there, get your voice out to the world. It's a very busy, <clears throat> noisy world, the world of business, and sometimes it can just be difficult to cut through that noise um, and to be that point of difference and to get your product or your service out there. So um, with different ways of showcasing and events, um, then, yeah, I can certainly help. And also on the side of things where if you are in that place of procrastination or overwhelm and you just need help just getting... Um, started again or getting organized then yes we can certainly help in that uh, that area as well so yeah all sorts of different um ways of yeah helping you to get organized and get your message out um so my tip for today um it sort of relates to what natalie tollop was talking about last night or one of the things she mentioned that really resonated with me um was about that self-belief um because at the end of the day as as natalie said you know if you don't believe and trust in yourself, then how can you possibly expect other people to use your products and services and to believe and trust in what you're offering? Um, and sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes, you know, we know that what we're offering is what people need, but, you know, is it viable? Is it different to what other people are offering? How can we really get that out? Um, and to have those people, as Fiona says, that, ha that are around you and actually get you and believe in what you're saying. And so for the days when you're just going, Seriously, <laughs> I cannot do this anymore. I can't take this anymore. I'm going back to the nine to five, whatever the <laughs> plan B or C is. Um, yeah, they're just like, uh, uh no, you're not. And yeah, as Natalie said, you know, if you are 100% committed to what you're doing and if you believe in it that much, then there is no plan B, C, D or Z. Um, you know, it's like stepping over the line, she says, and in it for the long haul. So, um, yeah, just make sure that you've got those people around you that are there um, for you when when you have those moments. Great tips. And we all Absolutely. need those people in our lives to support us, don't we, in business? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the phone a, friend, phone a friend card I made? And I put it on uh, Instagram. You might have seen it. I put a little, um, we all need in our wallet, a phone a business friend card. Oh. Uh, a list of people that we can call when it really the shit hits the fan or uh, it's just someone to you know let that out with who know who holds who sees the best in you yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. so uh, important I mean I did have a wobble yesterday morning and it was Natalie that was like okay so how can we get you out this wobble and it was like I can't possibly you know I've got so much to do today this event tonight blah, blah, blah. and in the end the next thing I knew I found myself with a beautiful pot of tea in a cafe <laughs> and a bit of cake um and it was just what I needed just to stop and uh yeah reassess and um get going again so yeah absolutely uh, a nice. great example yeah very cool Hey, I see we've got some listeners um, just joining us now. Um, type in the comments box where you're listening in from. We'd love to know where people are listening in from. Um, we've had people from all around the world um, come into our shows, so we're keen to know we're, we're um, broadcasting from Auckland, New Zealand today and all different sides of, oh, no, you guys are up the, the north end of, of Auckland. I'm out west. 
<laughs> oh, here we go. Down from Tower on that. And Jonathan, where are you calling in from? I don't know, but he likes tea and cakes. So that's good. Ah. <laughs> All right, you're, you're most welcome then, Jonathan. <laughs> I can't make tea and cake. <laughs> So um, I'm going to introduce our fabulous guest, Tracy Manu from Blossom. Now, we met, I'm trying to think, how many years ago? Was it three? I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, we we met through, I think it was networking, I think, networking events. And mm. then we did a course together, yep. which was really cool. And got to know each other better. And, and yeah, we became Skype buddies. Yes, <laughs> um, yes. Connecting. And um, Tracy is a um, wonderful woman to talk to. She's got one of those voices that you really just want to sit and listen to. She's got a lovely voice to listen to. And she's a great speaker. So um, Tracy runs Blossom. And she is, the well, she's the founder of Blossom. She's a life coach, keynote speaker, and writer. And recently, a Kundalini uh, yoga teacher. She helps women um, to strengthen their self-belief and self-love and helps them discover what's holding them back and to deepen, surrender, and embrace their truth. So they can weave a beautiful life, one that sets their soul alight. Who doesn't want some of that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's, she's come to understand on an intrinsic level that everything that happens in our lives is directly linked to the relationship we have with ourselves. What we believe becomes our reality. The more we connect with our authentic self and cultivate a beautiful relationship within, the more our lives flourish. She created Blossom, a lifestyle company where she supports women to look within and weave their own tapestry for a beautiful life. And she feels really humbled to have walked alongside many women, watching them flourish and live a more soulful and successful life. After coaching women for over six years, she's realized that we all want to feel a happiness that filtrates deeper than the job we have or the next activity we can tick off on our to-do list. We're looking for happiness that resides in the deepest part of our being. We long to feel loved, good enough, and brave enough to follow the call of our soul. So this is what she calls falling madly in love with your life. So welcome, welcome, Tracy. So great to have you here today. Thank you. Gosh, it was really cool just to hear you read that. <laughs> <laughs> I got the ghosties when I read it before. I was like, oh, so cute. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. Cool. Yeah. So, Tracy, um, we're talking about the topic of intuition and in business. And I know that traditional business schools or university degrees would never cover that topic. But I think all three of us here today know how important that is um, at the very foundation of why we're even in business. Mm. Would you say so? Absolutely, yeah. I think there's just so much more flow in business when we are aligned with our intuition. You know, um, it's where it's where the juicy stuff comes in. You know, and we get lower than those superficial conversations and and things that go on. Yeah, we deepen into what is real. That's yeah. what I believe. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of process do you take people through? with the intuition, to get in touch with their intuition. Because if you've never done that kind of work before or known how to trust it, what do you suggest people do when they're first starting to explore that idea? Yeah, I, I, I help people to understand the difference between what their intuition sounds like and what their chattery mind sounds like. Oh, great. So, yeah. um, so they just start like for the first couple of weeks of coaching with them, working with them, I just get them to start to observe what is going on in their life and what it feels like to hear the chattery voice and what mm. it sounds like to hear or feel that wise self that is within us because they're very, very different. You yeah. know, the, the intuition can sound quite centered and calm and you just know it and you feel it in your body where the chattery voice is more likely to be, racing you know faster you're breathing up in your chest rather than right down in your belly mm -hmm. um, you've got worrying fearful thoughts coming into your mind so they're very different but when yeah. we're in that fearful state 
it can be hard and we start to go, but I'm not sure if it's intuition or whether it's just that chatty voice. But when you're questioning that, it's usually your chatty voice. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great tip. Because I did, that was one of the things I thought about, you know, um, that people might say if they hadn't, you know, how do I know what it is? <laughs> what do I look for? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good yeah. little, uh, that's a good little thing. Do you, do you, what techniques do you use journaling? Do you use any techniques to help people to start uncover and unravel that? Yeah, definitely journaling. Absolutely. Also though, being mindful, you know, just yep. doing things by being in the present moment. And I remember a long, long time ago when um, my youngest child went to school and I remember going to the supermarket and going, I'm just going to be really mindful. And so I was actually picking up the oranges one at a time, like looking at it feeling it, becoming really aware of it. Because in the past, I'd grab the oranges, chuck them in the bag, race around the supermarket, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. with all these things I have to do. And, yeah. um, and so it was just practicing being really mindful. And that becomes quite meditative um, when you continually yes. do that. And then you hear, um, you know, I heard your blab talk with Belinda and she spoke about the soul's whispers. You hear those whispers mm. when you are when you're mindful. You don't hear yeah. it when your life is chocker and your mind is is running rings around you. Yeah, yeah. What do you do when you hear those um, when you hear those thoughts or ideas? Do you start do you write them down? Do you what do you do with them? There are a couple of things that I um, do. First, I breathe. You know, yeah. I think, and I. I I noticed this when I first started doing yoga, but I notice it with everyone who starts my classes is that we breathe in our chest. Mm. So we inhale and we breathe our chest and we breathe out of our chest. And it's just that really quite fast, unsettled kind of breath. And so I practice breathing right down into my belly. So as I inhale, I fill my belly first, then my chest. And then as I exhale, I empty my chest and then my belly. And mm. I just continue that breath for a while, which gets me more centered. Mm. And then I go and write. Absolutely. I have so many journals. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I love writing. Yeah. Just so much clarity comes out in that. And, you know, sometimes it's going and chatting with someone. And you mentioned it before, Fee, that it's it's not about trying to find your answers from other people, but when you mm. have that dialogue and when you say things out loud, you catch yourself um, and you can pull yourself back into being in that centered space. Mm, cool. I think so. And I think it's, you know, we've often got the answers within ourselves, haven't we? I've seen it at networking groups where we're having a brainstorm or something and just someone saying what they're dealing with out loud, they suddenly go, oh, no, hang on, I've got it. And it's yeah. just that moment of, giving yourself that space and as you say speaking out loud that um yeah it really really does come about yeah um, yeah for sure something else i find really works is um mirror work and you know i've spoken about this for years like look in the mirror and say good things to yourself and you find so quickly your chatterbox voice comes in you know that's so stupid oh my god i feel so silly doing this um you know i found one this morning a, a voice you know a little chattery thing that was don't be a show off you know, <laughs> don't be a show off. Don't just don't shine too much. And it's like, no, damn it. <laughs> I'm not here to play small, you know. So yeah. it's like being mindful. If I wasn't mindful in that moment, I wouldn't even have heard that. And then I would have shut myself down and, you know, mm. showing up being not authentically me. So yeah, it's really listening. And what, and, and thinking about intuition and how it served you in your business and, and moving forward, what have you, you know, what kind of intuition have you taken notice of and, and how's that kind of taking you forward in life and business? I think um, when I got introduced to Kundalini Yoga, you know, I went to my first class and I came out of that class just like I felt like my intuition, or my body was just so lit up it was like mm. wow that was amazing and I went back for my second class and heard very clearly go and learn to teach this like mm. just go and do it and and so I just I came home and I said to Annie I'm gonna go and train to do this I really want to teach it and I remember getting over to do the training which I did over in Australia and I was in the room going to start the training and I was thinking what the hell am I doing here like I did not decide to be a yoga teacher total fear mm. coming up but there was something inside me that was going, just go with it. Like, just be here and go with it. Mm. And, you know, I'm so happy that I listened to that and didn't listen to the fear that came up as I was packing my bag, as I got to the airport. As I, 
you know, I'm so happy I didn't listen to that because it's given me the skill as help people on a way different level than mm. the coaching has. Um, and so listening to that, even though it seems like, really? I'm going to go and train to be a yoga teacher? <laughs> you know, just going with it. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any tips of once you've decided, like, make, made a decision like that to then how to deal with the chatteries? Um, you know, like, you're like, no, I'm dealing, like, I'm working with the intuition, I'm going for it, I'm listening. And then, yeah, are there any ways to make sure that those chatteries make, don't change your mind? I think definitely chatting with people that are, that want to see the bigger picture and know about possibilities and opportunities and, they see they see more in you than when you're in that fearful space you see in yourself, you know. Um, yeah. I think that's one thing. Again, journaling, deep breaths. Um, you know, and there were times when I was still in my fear and I was saying to Andy, I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing. And he's like, well, you've chosen to do it now, so you may as well go and do it, you know. Yeah. So, you know, there's times when ego is still calling out, but you just go, I'm just going to do it anyway, you know. I'm just going to do it. So sometimes it's just jumping um, I remember years ago a situation in my life where I could stay where I was or I could decide to make a huge change in my life mm -hmm. and I remember just visualizing myself standing on the edge of the cliff and deciding to jump and I wasn't sure where I was going to end, uh, end up but I was jumping anyway and it was you know it was a visualization but it was so powerful because I had given myself 100% permission to jump mm -hmm. and and I landed somewhere which was different, but incredibly rewarding. So, you know, sometimes it's you feel that fear and you've got to do it anyway. Yeah, totally. What, um, in terms of intuition and business, have you um, noticed stuff? Do you obviously do you use that a lot with your clients? Is it something that guides you in the way that you work with people? 100% absolutely yeah. it's it's really interesting you know when people ask me what I do I explain what I do but I always say the sessions are going to be really organic because we can say we're going to focus on this certain thing but if I'm hearing you know blocks or um, what's going on what's not being said as well as what's being said yeah. when I tune into that then we're going to go into that you know and and move it because if we're not dealing with the stuff that is the underlying issue then we're just staying where we are or not making the progress that we really want to so um, as time has gone by yeah I've really learned to listen in and that's been really hard because I've always been someone who has been a pleaser I've yeah. always wanted to keep things really nice and smooth and mm. happy and, and you know <laughs> so to hear my intuition going pull her up on that <laughs> I'm going oh I don't want to <laughs> But I had a really cool coach one day um, say to me, you're not there to get validation from your clients. You are there to support them. Mm. And that was like a slap in the face because, to be honest, in the first couple of years, I think I was there as much to get validation as I was that I wanted to help them. But I hadn't worked through a lot of my own self-belief and, and yeah. self-worth issues. So, yeah, it's taken a lot of courage to step up and just say what's coming up for me through my intuition. Yeah. yeah, good on you. Have you always been aware, Tracy, <clears throat> have you always been um, aware, Tracy, of your intuition and how it works and things, or is it something that something happened in your life and it, you know, it, was it a course or, um, yeah, an event or something that just made you tune in a bit more? Man, I have been through some tough times in my life and at that time I don't think I was um, in tune with my intuition very much at all. Um, and there were times during those times when I would hear those little whispers, but my fear was so loud that I didn't follow it. I think as a young child, I was quite connected to it, um, or to myself, to my truth. And yeah, as, as my teenage years came up, I definitely strayed off and my twenties were similar. And then late 20s, started to attend. Well, I read, read Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life. Mm. And that was probably the first step to, wow, I'm actually responsible for what's going on in my life. And um, attended a couple of her workshops based on her work. And again, just, you know, really taught me about self-love. And yeah. as I grew my self-love, 
my intuition became clearer because I was loving myself enough to not do the things that were sabotaging my happiness. Yeah, mm. yeah. 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 And sabotage that's is a biggie, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I was I was really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we I think human beings kind of give themselves, yeah, that's probably the thing that they excel most in. Mm. They get an A plus on a grade system pretty much for sabotage most of us at some stage, right? At some absolutely. stage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And with intuition, um, if people are thinking about it for their own businesses, what would you say they would look at? So like, I'm thinking, you know, because opportunities come up in our business and we're at a crossroads maybe. What would what kind of processes do you go through? So obviously when you had that yoga idea come to you, but say um, someone wanted to collaborate with you, that's another thing I think that comes up quite a lot for us people working by ourselves. You know, what kind of um, process do you go through to figure out if that's the right place for you to go or not? I listen to how I feel like yeah. my feelings are so it's what guides me um, and I had two gorgeous women ask me to work with them I love what they do I really love what they do but I went to two meetings and as I left those meetings something didn't feel quite right mm. and but my pleasing nature was coming up oh I've yeah. said that I would work with them you know gosh I've got to stick to it yeah. and um, you know after the second meeting I sat and I chatted with someone Natalie Tollop <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she said go and journal about that <laughs> so went home journaled and realized you know it wasn't where I wanted to go you know and even though I love what they do it wasn't a fit for me and so you know ringing them up and saying exactly that being in my truth and saying you know I love what you're doing but it just doesn't feel right and you know something else I've really noticed is when we're mind opportunities and people and clients are there all the time mm. they are always around us but when we are not aligned with our purpose a lot or listening to our intuition or being present they just walk past us you know we might even have a conversation with them but we're so busy in our chattery mind that we're not picking up the cues of of how they could do with our services or how they need our help mm. so it's becoming really really mindful and present you know one of the best skills I learned through my coaching training was to listen to really listen to what people are saying and to listen to what they're not saying and you know to ask questions um, and that's quite difficult when we're just simply listening to all that you know how can we hear what they're really saying and be really present yeah that's powerful mm. That I um I know what you mean about that saying no to people. That's one of the biggest yeah, that's one of being one of my biggest oh you know, people come to you and they're excited and they're generally wanting to, you know, you like them and how can you say no to that person? That that's been one of my biggest struggles to kind of step back and yeah, and I've had to do that recently in a couple of things. And it's been I've done it in a, in a um I noticed in the past I might have been quite abrupt with it because I didn't know how to deal with it. It was either, you know, because I felt, you know, all those feelings of, oh, you know, they're going to think bad of me anyway or um, I'm letting them down and I just went into this negative talk. So I'd be like, oh, no, no, I haven't got time for that and just not mm -hmm. acknowledge that they came to me with a gift. So it's basically like I chucked the gift back in their face and slammed the door, really. <laughs> oh, nasty, eh? Um, <laughs> I, I, I admit I did that. Very um, honest. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, recently someone, you know, invited me to join another group. Um, and I said, look, I've, I'm fully committed right now. Mm. I really um, admire what you're doing. I like what you're doing. Um, I really don't have the time to commit. And when I commit to something, I want to go at it wholehearted and join in. So I'm going to say no for now. And that felt really authentic. And it's me. It's expressing, here's my personal boundaries. I like what you're doing. I admire what you're doing. Right now, it's not going to work. Mm. And it felt yeah. so freeing. And that was from my intuition. But there was still a bit of me going, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's a good spot right there to go to the mirror, you know, and go, mm. wow, you honoured yourself. Mm. You honoured yourself, you know, and that's, it's so important that we honour ourselves because things don't flow when we say yes no. to things we really mean no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, then you end up, you know, like when I got my adrenal fatigue, I was over committing and I had to, and, I, and I, then, I, then I'd have to pull out. So I'd commit and then go, no. So I was letting that person down anyway, eventually, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. or myself or someone else, you know. So, yeah, you have to really, that personal boundaries is part of your intuition, really. Oh, absolutely. It? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think it all comes back to that whole self-respect thing, doesn't it? You know, and once you do that and you know your boundaries and give yourself that space, then I guess, um, yeah, there is room for that intuition voice to uh, to come in and for you to be able to to hear it as well. Yeah, it's like right now. So three times now I've heard coming through tell them about the little tool I love myself there for. And then oh. I just carry on, you know. <laughs> like, uh, you're on a show about intuition, Tracy. Tell them. <laughs> tell so, us, um, Tracy. You know, there's just this really simple statement that you write, I love myself there for. And then you okay. finish that with as many ways as you can think of. You know, and one is, I love myself there for, I set a boundary with people who I don't particularly want to work with you know I love myself <laughs> I love myself I, and you can send them love like I send them love but but send yourself love by loving yourself therefore mm. stopping and having lunch stopping and going for a walk you mm. know showing up unapologetically you just I love myself therefore as many things as possible oh that's juicy that's awesome I yeah. love that. I'm going to be doing a lot of that. <laughs> Good. Great. Yeah. I've only just discovered journaling. Um, Natalie, well, I know that it's been a good thing for, what, no, 10 years probably? <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't listening to anybody so tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> no one was telling me to do that. Um, and then Natalie, I did Natalie's um, shapeshifter course. Liz and I both did it recently. And... Um, Part of that was journaling, and you should have heard my voice going, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be doing this. Um, so, um, but I started doing it, and I just asked myself three questions a day, and it just felt really good. Nice. I used Brene Brown's, What Am I Curious About? What Am I Feeling? And then, What are Actions Am I Going to Take? Mm, I love that. And that, that for me, that that's my kind of like one, two, three, get out of the shit. Or one, two, three, acknowledge gratitude flow. It's kind of like some days I wake up and I'm like, yay, it's a Disney cartoon and the birds are circling around my head and, you know, I'm a <laughs> Disney princess. And other mornings I wake up and the kids are fighting and screaming and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pull the covers over my bed. Oh, yes. So um, that's. Yeah, on either side of the coin or in between, I find those questions have been really good, but I'm going to add that one because I really mm. like that. Great. Awesome. Something yes. else I find um, really works is setting an intention in the morning. You know, wake yeah. up as soon as you wake up um, and saying, my intention today is to listen to my intuition Ooh. and then check in during the day and actually see if you are listening to your intuition or whether mm. you just said that for the sake of saying it. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you told me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, because those times where you know, like journaling is really good for you, but for ten years you resist it. It's like stopping yourself. You know, what actually? Why am I resisting this? Mm. And and just stopping yourself and pausing for a moment and really looking at why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Doing instead of being. You know, I, I learned I heard something the other day about we are human beings. Yes. Hue mean hue meaning light. Hue is a light. Oh man, really? Yeah, man meaning, you know, a person. Human yeah. being. When you be, you shine your light as a person. Human being. I love that. Oh, I love that too. That's yeah. Good. We're not human doings. We're human beings. Yeah. Sorry, you can see we're both frantically writing notes. <laughs> yeah, well, just carry on, please. We'll just take notes. <laughs> Anybody else it. taking lots of notes? Just comment if you are. <laughs> so, is there a way, Tracy, like you talk about listening and you talk about mindfulness and things, like how can people practice and sharpen their intuition so that that voice is louder and the chattery ones are quieter? Like, does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it sure I, want, I want mine with a big megaphone. 
<laughs> and then you just got to quiet the quiet quiet in the chatty mind. You know, there are a couple of things I love getting people to do, and one is um, test yourself. So you'll hear little things in your mind, but you'll quickly shove them out. So test yourself with them. Um, you know, I always do the car park, and I hear many people say about the car park, ask for a car park, trust where you're meant to go to find that car park. I now do it with where I'm going instead of using the GPS. It's like, okay, I'm going to get to this place. And, you know, just trust my intuition and, and I get there, you know. Well, so it's yeah. it's little wee things that, that – and then you've got proof because we look for proof throughout our life, you know. Yes. It, it, yeah, it relates to our beliefs too. You know, if we're not good enough, then we'll look for proof that we're not good enough and we'll see all the stuff that makes us feel that way. But if we change that belief to I am good enough and we start to look for proof like that, then we – feel like we are good enough. And it's the same with our intuition. Look for proof that your intuition is actually working. So, you know, focus on someone and see if they get in touch or, yeah, just play with it. Play with your intuition. Yeah, because when you when you contacted me, Tracy, about coming back about coming on the show, I was like, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. You so notice yeah, that too? Proof. Yeah, you notice that too, Liz? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. If, uh, as you say, if people are on my list, it only ha happened yesterday. I wanted to catch up with a lady for a coffee and a tea and cake. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, she messaged me because she was looking for some help with her SEO kind of thing. So it's just, um, yeah, I think it really is about yeah putting, putting things out there, putting messages out there. And um, yeah, for sure. I guess I hadn't connected that with intuition, but I guess it's all tied, tied in. Mm. Yeah. yeah we, I mean intuition to me is flow. So yeah. we're we're in our flow when we're when we listen to our intuition. So, you know, when life is cruising along, then you're most likely in your flow and listening to your intuition. When there's you know, you're butting up against stuff, then in some way you're out of sync, you're not listening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I practiced the, the, the mindfulness last night when I was um, getting some review over my um, short story pace because, um, you know, like most people, um, criticism's hard to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's really easy to get defensive. Yeah. Um, but I really just practiced being present for each individual's response to my story and what they got from it and what meant things to them and just said thank you at the mm. end after each person and said thanks for, I said thank you for your appreciate thank you for the feedback I appreciate your notes nice. and the time you took and it was interesting watching the eyes the eye contact when I did that I mean I'd kind of said thanks before but not looked at them mm. and it was really interesting watching the, the the whole shift and mood in the room and the lightness wow and the fun and the laughter that being present, yeah. That's powerful. That's it's, so it's cool. cool. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But I went in there with an intention. I set an intention for the feedback that I was going to be present for the feedback and just let it be and not attach to they think badly of it, they think I'm a dumb blonde, they think I'm a blah, 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 story, 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 chatter, chatter, chatter. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Do you do that when you go to certain events? Like if you go to speak, when you're speaking, do you set a specific intention for a talk? Or Yeah. I go in, like when I get to somewhere, I go into the bathroom, I look in the mirror, I say good stuff to myself. Mm. Like you are going to do an incredible job, Tracy. Whatever you share is going to be what, you know, someone will need to hear it. Righty ra. You know, I just give myself some, and then I look right into my pupils and I say, I love you, Tracy. I really, really love you. <laughs> <laughs> because that little girl in me mm -hmm. that just goes, what if I screw up? You know, <laughs> what if I screw up? I don't want to. I don't want to make a fool of myself. That little girl in us, which I think is totally linked to ego, mm. needs to be reassured. You know, she needs yeah. to be reassured and and um, so, yeah, I just find chatting with her is, is powerful. Very much She's so. okay. Yeah. 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 And there's a really cool little um, technique, actually, that I love to share where, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, when, you're, when your little girl is 
taking over and you're in fear and worry and you want to throw the toys out of the cot, I just imagine myself sitting on a seat at a bench at a bus stop and the bus comes along and the little me comes out of the bus. I must sound really weird right now, but it works. And um, I hold her hand and we walk down the park and we chat and I just say to her, you know, what do you need from me right now? And she might say, I just need you to give me a cuddle or I just need you to say I'm going to be okay or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. so I imagine saying that to her and then I pick her up and I hug her and then I make her really, really small so she fits in the palm of my hand and then I place her in my heart and I just hold her in my heart there. And, and so she feels safe because quite often we, we say the ego is bad or we might try and shove it out of the way and all yes. that sort of stuff, you know. And when you're... If you're in a t kid's room and all the mess is there and you just shove it under the mat, then it's going to come out at some stage. And quite often with ego, when you try and shove it away, it just comes out at inappropriate times, you know. Yeah. It just shows up and you're like, oh, my God. Sometimes you know you're reacting, but you just can't stop it. So when you first notice that the little person in you is freaking out, it's really good to just have a chat with her and reassure her. Nice. And then get back into being centred and grounded. Yeah. Mm, very cool. I actually did a similar exercise once <clears throat> when I was going through some stuff and just um, kept asking my little self why. Like, why did I need that? Why did I need that? Just kept going on and on. And then it just resulted in the fact that I was just missing my brother at that time in the UK and I just missed one of his massive, massive hugs. And once he realised that and, you know, I got on and I had a Skype with him and we connected with him. And it was just, um, yeah, amazing how once you get back to what that little girl needs, um, yeah. yeah, it can make things so simple and actually practical. You can actually do something about it yeah. rather than sort of being in your massive fear or overwhelm or whatever it is, sadness. Yeah. Yes. I remember yeah, love that exercise. Mm. I remember getting some negative um, feedback about a client once from a client um, who I had coached and – I just remember feeling devastated, you know, mm. absolutely devastated with what she was saying. Um, and I remember ringing up a friend and at the time she said, right, this is not a personal attack on you. And it was like, okay, <laughs> I'm actually making a, a personal attack right now. <laughs> and she's like, put your business hat on, take a few breaths and really see this for what it is, you know. And I had so jumped into not good enough and all that sort of stuff and just taking a few breaths and getting back in tune with actually this is I can learn from this but this is more this is about her as well um, oh yeah yeah was was really really powerful you know and it's yeah. just always coming back to the breath and who you truly are yeah do you think the conditioning of our kind of western society um has got a lot to do with keeping us not trusting our intuition like the scientific methods and you know you know we don't talk about our emotions or our feelings and do you think that really stifles us trusting intuition i think that that has been the case but i think us even communicating about it that way is stifling it yeah you know i i really think that things are changing so so much you know scientifically proven now that we are energy mm, you know exactly. and and before then it was like what we're not energy Jeepers, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah and and so even that is opening more and more people up to the fact totally. that there is so much more than we are so much more than just this you know we are so much yeah. more when we can yeah. connect in with that which is partly you know intuition as well um, our lives change so, so much, you know. We experience that deeper sense of happiness. We are more driven and aligned with what is truly important to us. Yeah. Mm. I suppose I was thinking more like, you know, in the 70s, 80s, you know, that that was not talked about as much. Like you think about the family, nuclear family, and like how we were raised. I know that my family, that was it just never opened that topic at all it wasn't it was you know you went to university and you studied and that was study yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know that was the only form of study legitimate so yeah yeah absolutely totally and I think we're changing that you know we're allowing totally. our children to share their feelings so much more yeah um, yeah than we did and our parents were doing the best they could but yeah it is I mean Ellie has put conditioning yeah absolutely yeah 100% 
completely. And I guess it's also that whole thing that, you know, it is that subjective um, take on it, you know, whereas if traditionally success is objective and, you know, measurable and all the rest of it. But, um, yeah, obviously there's a lot to play in the subjective side where, as yeah, you say, Fiona, it's not taught and it's not discussed and um, things. And, yeah, maybe, I don't know if schools are becoming a bit more round to it, a bit more, a bit about out of touch in that area. But, um, yeah, just a bit more mindful. I think some schools are having sort of meditation uh, sessions now, aren't they? And yeah. um, sort of some sort of practices with regards to that. So hopefully... The, um, the woman who, um, mindfulness, um, psychologist, mindfulness teacher, um, Chantal Hofstey, who's just written a book, and she's got an yeah. amazing CD, which I, I use quite regularly, um, of um, guided meditation. So cool. I love it. It's She's got, like, specific things to just talk you through. And she's like you, Tracy. She's got one of those voices you just listen to and you get zened out by listening to the voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and um, she um, she's done some work with some kids in school. She actually did went into a school and did some work with teachers to teach them mindfulness. Mm, and then the teachers taught the kids. And I was just I just about cried. I was like, oh wow, what a gift for kids! Yeah, to teach 100%. them to deal with that. And I know that um, I managed to connect her with um, the school that my sons go to and she's going to be running a course for the teachers there and I can't wait to see what what kind of springs from there I think Mm. as you say Tracy there's there's some big shifts happening right now and science is kind of caught up with the stuff that has been talked about on the fringes right for a while and it's coming to the forefront now and science backs up as you say that you know we're you know the smallest component of the human body is energy Mm, so yeah. yeah how can we relate to that <laughs> it's exciting absolutely it is. Mm. it is it is our kids have got a big gift haven't they yeah mm. and I was um, see if uh, Ali was going to jump in the hot seat oh um, cool is it uh, oh not right now but I'd love to connect with Tracy no problem cool. if anyone else love has to. any questions or wants to um yeah jump in then do let us know cool um Tracy Thank you so much for your time today. As usual, I knew I'd get some great little aha moments. I always do talking to you. <laughs> thank you. I've got some too. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's a win-win. Yeah. Thank you. Always, always. That's gorgeous. Um, so for those of you listening in, so intuition in business is is really important. It's to, and it's about trusting yourself and backing yourself. Mm. and learning to tune into the intuition and, and differentiate it from the negative chatter and self-talk, which will drag us down into a path that really won't get us any happiness. <laughs> um, and it sets, And we talked about, you know, the, the setting the personal boundaries for yourself and the importance of, of holding yourself is, is, and self-care comes into that as well, you know. Those mm. personal boundaries, trust your intuition about when to say no. <laughs> And yes. you have to say yes as well on the converse side, right? Absolutely. Um, how about you, Liz? What did, what are the things that you resonated most, most with you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Tracy answered my first question straight away, which was in terms of those two two voices and what is the difference. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, and I think in terms of differentiating it, if you are questioning it, which is it then? Um, yeah, it's uh, obviously the chattery, chattery voices because you haven't got that feeling. So that was really good. And yeah, just the space and the mindfulness and um, yeah, giving yourself that space to listen and um, yeah, hear what, hear what is what you are being guided with and um, showing. So yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Have we got links and things? Um, yeah, I was just going to um, grab um, a link to... Um, the website i'm just going to pop that down here for everybody so um, is it um sort of one-on-one sessions tracy how do people work with you so um yeah one-on-one sessions so i do three mu- a three-month coach program um to support you to love your life more and speaking events so i'll be a keynote speaker if you want to someone who will just get you inspired and more in touch with who you truly are so you can create a, a life you love and um i've just created a six-month program um, which I'm really really excited about it's supporting women who are making a difference in the world but they're not fully aligned with it they're not fully connected with it and they want to be a greater force for good in the world Um, 
and so you can have a free session and learn more about that if that's what you're wanting to do if you're wanting to show up more you know I'm a big believer Mahatma Gandhi's quote be the change you wish to see in the world mm -hmm. so first of all it's about helping you become who you want and the change you want to make in the world so that's pretty exciting and I've just recorded a couple of audios too so wake up in the morning and set your intention oh nice and yeah, and then a nice one for before you go to sleep, just to really settle yourself down and let go of the day. Um, you can find them on my website too. Oh, cool. I'll pop yeah. the link, everybody who's listening in, pop the link for um, Tracy's website here, and you can have a look at her coaching options just there. Um, and then below that, I'll pop the link for anybody who's not part of our Business Made Easy private Facebook group. I do daily posts there um, to inspire you, to give you tips and, and ideas about how to make your life easier. I'm going to pop a, um, a, a photo of Tracy up in the book now, at, in the Facebook group now, in the book yeah. now, Facebook group now. <laughs> and um, feel free to ask questions um, in the thread under that of Tracy. Um, she'll be able to pop back in there a bit later on and, and check on those. Um, thank you everybody for listening in today. Um, Liz and I, uh, next week, we are hopping on to do a, uh, a little bit of a brainstorm and hot seat. So we are going to be launching our first um, of a monthly series of action sessions. Mm. So what we noticed was that we were talking about this the other day and we were laughing just going that's what it is that's exactly what it is we go to these amazing events and we like write lots of notes and if we're really good we might take action on one or two things but we probably need to stop and brainstorm some more ideas to get more concrete about what we want to do mm. and we need to actually take some time out of our busy day and take the bloody action working on our business so we did that actually we um Natalie Toloff and Liz came to my place a couple of months ago and we spent a Saturday and we was it a Sunday I can't remember Sunday. now it was a Saturday yeah we spent the day together um we did a walk we had breakfast and then we just got harder to and Liz timed us and kept us on time when we went off um and we did the work and mm. I wrote three quarters of a program in that day I have never been so productive um, it was an amazing way of just um, getting it done, but from a place of trusting and having the support of like-minded women who get you, who see the best in you, and generally want to help other people. And that's what we're here to do. That's what we both love, absolutely love doing. So we have our first event in July coming up, and I will, um, Liz, can you pop the Eventbrite link up? <laughs> um, if you're interested in joining us, um, it's going to be in my home, so it's by um, only a very small amount of people that we're inviting into my space. Um, we're going to create a brainstorm session around blogging, because I know that a lot of people think and have good intentions to blog. Um, but they get stuck about what to write about, what topics, that kind of thing. So we've called in one of our um, dear friends and um, people, person we've both used to help us, Christine Sheehy, to help us give us some technical tips and hints about writing. So um, she'll be Skyping in for a power lesson for 20 minutes and we'll brainstorm and we'll have a beautiful morning tea from one of my local cafes down here at my home and then we'll get stuck into writing a blog so our goal really is for you guys to all leave with a blog written mm -hmm. and have a plan in place about the topics you want to do so you've really learned some um some good skills around getting you stuck in so you know next time you get to that stage you can do it um the following month we're going to be doing something different but this is our first month we're going to see how this plays out um, and we're looking forward to meeting people and getting that social interaction because uh, there's probably a lot of people out there who, like us, work by themselves mm. and get a bit so sick of talking to their dog or cat. They don't quite have the same enthusiasm and feedback that a human being does <laughs> for brainstorming. So we'd love to invite people who are in Auckland to um, come and join us. And Liz has popped the event bright link there. If you want to um, find out more about it, do you can PM me or Liz and um, have a chat to us about it and see if it might suit you. So that's what we're going to be talking about, taking action next week. That's our topic on Blab. Thank you so much to Tracy, our fabulous guest, talking about intuition. Thank you. We followed intuition on that one, didn't we, Liz? Because, yeah, 
we had Absolutely. so much fun. It's like, oh, we need to share this with other people. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Awesome. <laughs> um, and I've, I've got one more tip I'm going to share over in the um, Facebook page. So oh, brilliant. Hop on over and, oh. yeah, I'll share yeah. it over there. We'll see them then. Okay, thank, thank you. you for thank everybody. you so much. Brilliant. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.